Tesla shares seeing a bit of a bounce back this morning after slumping following warnings of a slowdown in 2024. News about the fall in EV demand, especially with rising competition in the space, leaving some investors worried about the future of EV car makers and what might happen as the year progresses. Let's bring in Brendan Jones, Blink Charging CEO, to discuss more. Uh, Brendan, a big piece of this concern about the EV slowdown is the driver concern that the infrastructure simply isn't there. I mean, that would seem to suggest you've got a lot of demand on your end to install chargers. What does that demand picture look like for you right now? So we're coming off our best year. Uh, we can't give full numbers yet because we still have yet to report in March. Uh, but the guidance we gave will be the best year in the history of the company, uh, both on the sales of L2 chargers, uh, which is the dominant means of charging and on DC fast charging on our owner operated model as well. So not a good year. It's been a great year for Blink. And we see that continuing into next year. There, there's two parts going on. We have to educate the public as well as where the majority of charging takes place, which is in the home, at work, at other convenient locations. That is a 90-10 split. 10% you're, tra you're charging on the road with the DC fast chargers and the other 90% at home. And that's a key point as we move forward. We got to continue to educate. Uh, to that point, where are you, uh, you know, seeing the most demand uh, without giving away those numbers, as you point out, because you've got earnings um, coming up. Are you seeing more sort of distribution in malls? Is it in offices? I mean, what does that look like when you think about where the holes are? in the EV infrastructure right now? It's a great question. And where we see the biggest opportunities, let's speak, it, speak to it that way. Uh, the fleet space is literally on fire. And then the multifamily space, as you're seeing more municipalities structurally adjust. I'll give you Massachusetts as an example. You can't repave, relight, or create a new parking place in, in Massachusetts without 10 to 15% uh, EV chargers being installed. So those are the big demands, and that's where the majority of our focus. In-home sales, we do a lot of those as well, but public DC fast charging is only about 10% of our mix. So we have to remember, we have to change the paradigm. You can charge anywhere with an EV. You don't have to go to a depot. There's nothing like waking up in the morning and having a full tank of fuel. Uh, and that's part of the education we have to get out there, but the numbers for our business they're quite impressive on that front. And it shows that, yeah, there might be a softening, but we're still going to have a major growth factor in all those areas as we move into 2024. Uh, Brendan, certainly been a lot made about the seven and a half billion dollars that was set aside in the infrastructure bill uh, in this under this administration for what the president said would be half a million chargers that would be distributed. Um, to date, the reports we've gotten is that that distribution simply hasn't happened outside of two states. To what extent is Blink able to tap into the funding that's available there? And what do you make of the slow distribution that has happened at a time where we have seen the White House say we've got to ramp up on EV adoption? So it, it's on target, actually. And I think it's a matter of expectation management. It does take a long time. And remember that first... Uh, $5 billion, predominantly DC fast charging. And that's the longest lead time of any station you can install. So there's a lot more states that are in the reward uh, element now where they're giving rewards out to different vendors. There's a whole bunch of states that have already have an approved plan. So it's all moving forward. But usually when you're looking at from the beginning of a grant process to the end, you're talking about 18 months to get it all going. But then once you get it going, the chargers start to flow in at a rapid pace and you start inaugurating stations left and right. Um, looking at uh, Blink as well as your competitors in this space, um, these shares have really just been hit hard because there are concerns about the higher costs up front, the long runway to profitability. Um, Blink's stock itself down more than 25% year to date. How do you communicate that to investors? I mean, you're telling me you're seeing record demand, and yet it doesn't seem like you're getting the buy-in from Wall Street that that's going to lead to profitability down the line. So when we, you know, we have a target and we've given guidance that we'll be able to positive by uh, December of this year. And 
we're sticking to that statement and all the numbers indicate we will achieve that. And also in Blink's model where we're mostly oriented on L2, our capital needs are greatly different than a company that focuses on DC fast charging like EVgo and others. It's a relatively inexpensive endeavor to install L2s and we do both sales and the owner operated model of chargers. So we profit from the gross mo uh, margin on selling equipment and services as well as from selling kilowatts on a station level. So we really have a flexible model that differentiates us. And indeed our goal as a company is to be the first publicly traded EV infrastructure company that is pro a, a bit of positive by the end of the year. Okay, we'll have to hold you to that and have you back on the show. Brendan Jones, Blink Charging CEO. It's good to have you on today. Appreciate the time. Absolutely. Thanks a lot.